Before we get into the latest rumors and news on the Miami Dolphins, a question for you at home or at work or wherever you are. Do you trust the Dolphins this free agency? Y for yes or N for no in the comments section. We begin with the latest on Teron Armstead as he is set to return to the Miami Dolphins on what is expected to be an adjusted contract. Now, adjusted can mean one of two things, as we'll show you the report from Ian Rappaport here, a restructure and or a pay cut. So two paths there. I would guess it would be a restructure. Maybe they'll add some, some void years on the back end to mitigate some of the ca salary cap stuff. Maybe they take a little bit of his base salary, make it incentive-based. That's a possibility as well. Uh, we'll figure out exactly what the Dolphins do once that gets announced. But either way, Armstead should return to Miami. He will not be retiring, which, again, was the expectation there. And it will save the Dolphins some much-needed salary cap space this year, potentially up to or maybe a little bit above $8 million. It's kind of your good over-under number to keep an eye on for that point. As the Dolphins are heavily over the cap, even now – on the eve of free agency, that's going to go a long way. It also gives them some stability, at least at tackle. You know, their entire interior offensive line are free agents. Their top backup tackle, tackle Kendall Lamb, is a free agent. So retaining Armstead, it, despite the injury concerns that are very valid and the, he's going to miss time, it's a big deal for Miami. Now, despite the expectation Armstead returns, the Dolphins might not be getting back Christian Wilkins. The growing buzz expectation around the NFL is that Wilkins will leave Miami in free agency despite the Dolphins trying to bring him back. In the latest ESPN Insider piece, Dan Graziano and Jeremy Fowler mentioned four teams, Houston Texans, Detroit Lions, Minnesota Vikings, and the Cleveland Browns as well. Given the recent contracts for Chris Jones, a inflated $32 million deal, and Justin Matabike, 24 and a half. I think the, Dol the Wilkins deal is probably going to come in around that 24 to $25 million range. I think someone will, get him to s will give him more than what Matabike got. Similar, comparable players. You might even be able to argue that Wilkins is a little bit better, and that's going to be outside, I think, what the Dolphins are willing to do with Wilkins, which makes that interior of the defensive line a little bit anxiety-inducing uh, to a certain extent. You're going to have Zach Steeler back. Thank goodness. We'll see about Raquan Davis, Christian Wilkins. Everyone else is depth. So you might lose Wilkins, yes. You're probably going to have to, if not draft somebody, invest in a, some veteran pieces to kind of add some much-needed depth at that spot. So if, when Christian Wilkins ends up leaving, how upset will you be? Scale this for me from 1 to 10 at the pinned comment of today's video. The ad comes on YouTube. Take advantage of it. Head down there. Go vote. Dolphins trade rumors also making their reappearance. Legereus Sneed once again being linked to the Dolphins by ESPN. In the same insider piece, here is the report. The Dolphins have gone all in with splash trades. Now the bill has come due. GM Chris Greer is always good for a sizable move or two. What about pairing Jalen Ramsey with a corner like Legereus Sneed? I believe Miami has at least looked into it. Now, what's noteworthy is despite ESPN connecting the Miami Dolphins, USA Today, in one of their pieces with uh, Tyler Dragon, saying sources tell him seven teams, not including Miami on that list, have interest. The Colts, Vikings, Patriots, Falcons, Jags, Lions, and the Titans. My guess is that a second-round pick ends up being the cost here. You know, maybe it comes in a little bit higher. Maybe it's second and change. You know, maybe a team at the very back of round one gets desperate. Who knows? But I think roughly a second-round pick is probably going to be about right, which is tough for a Dolphins team that doesn't have massive amounts of draft capital. And, oh, by the way, you're going to have to pay him in the ballpark of $20 million, which you weren't going to do for Xavier Howard, understandably so, not quite 20 when he got cut, but still. And you're going to pay for Sneed? He's a great, he's a great football player, though. You, you put Sneed and Ramsey out there, that is, what, just like we said, at the peak prime of Howard, although he didn't play great this year, the best, if not one, worst case, one of the best cornerback duos in the NFL, which always makes things interesting. But I am curious to see what the Dolphins choose to do here at corner. 
between Cater Kohu and Nick Needham, you should have one healthy corner who can play the, the nickel spot. And if you're trading for Legereus Sneed, that says you're basically giving up on Cam Smith, right? Or are you going to do him as CB4? You spent a second round pick on Cam Smith. If, if Sneed was a free agent, a veteran down to sign a one-year prove-it deal, I think that makes a lot more sense for Miami than giving up a massive percentage of your salary cap, you know, of the money you have to spend, I, I should say, and one of your premium draft picks. So what do you think when it comes to Sneed? D for deal, ND for no deal. Sound off in the comments section. Jarvis Landry? Uh, yeah, kind of surprised this one's back out there. Both Landry and Tyreek Hill, like they post from Omar Kelly, we'll show it to you here, about Landry returning to the Miami Dolphins. Now, A, uh, Jarvis Landry very much, I think, searching his own name on Twitter, which is fine. He is a re receiver. Tyreek Hill trying to maybe back one of his guys, I guess. I don't know. I have a lot of thoughts on this, but I want to hear from you guys in the comments. Would you sign Jarvis Landry if you were the Dolphins? Would you bring back Juice? S for sign, P for pass. Not to be mean, but I'm going to be a little bit mean, mean here. I have zero desire to do this. Landry is out of juice. I am sorry to say the man is cooked. He is washed. He is done, I think, in the NFL. There is a reason why nobody signed him last year. And to, to be blunt, for a Dolphins reporter to, to float the idea of, ah, Landry can be your wide receiver three, honestly tells me he has not watched a second of Jarvis Landry since he left the Miami Dolphins. Or he is caught up in the nostalgia of it or something. Because Landry, if, if you were to look up regression in the dictionary, it'd be a screenshot of this. Thousand yard receiver in 2019. Cool. Numbers dipped to 840. All right, not great. He played one less game, but still. Missed three more games in 2021. 570 yards. Then only played nine games in 2022. Wasn't very good. Every single number you see on screen there, catches, yards, average, touchdowns, games played, they dropped off. And then he didn't play football last season. He had as many yards as you guys did. Maybe there's even a, a pro player or a college player or a high school player who's watching, and they outperformed them. It doesn't make any sense. You want to add a former Dolphin? Bring back Trent Sherfield. He at least played football last season. You can re-sign Braxton Berrios pretty cheaply. Maybe you give more, uh, more playing time to Eric as a comma. You don't, adding Jarvis Landry is just, is looking at the name and going, oh, I think he still has something left. He doesn't though. He was bad the last time we saw him play and that was over a year ago. Just, just doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry. Now we will have more Dolphins free agency news and rumors for you guys right here on the channel. If Dolphin stuff happens, we'll have you guys covered. Don't miss out. Hit that sub button at youtube.com slash Dolphins News. Speaking of re-signings, Nick Needham is back in the fold with the Dolphins. We kind of mentioned that when talking about Sneed there. Uh, don't have the contract details on Needham. I would assume basically the vet minimum. Now, I will also make note, Miami remains over the salary cap. Uh, the Armstead restructure, pay cut, whatever that ends up being, the adjusted contract will save them some money. I assume they'll restructure guys like Tyreek Hill, Jalen Ramsey. That Those two moves alone will get them under the salary cap. But according to the, the Miami Herald, there are other players this team is interested in re-signing. Five names to monitor here in no particular order, just in the order that the Herald listed them. Braxton Berrios, the wide receiver. He can do some slot stuff for you. Andrew Van Ginkle, I think, is an underrated player. Would like to retain him. Isaiah Wynn, you got Freed and Cigar. You're probably going to lose Robert Hunt. Having one starter-ish piece that's not named Liam Eikenberg is probably a good idea on the interior. Savon Ahmed could come back. Maybe he becomes RB3 if you eventually cut Jeff Wilson. And then Brandon Jones, the safety, who I think has some young promise. Injuries have obviously played a big role in, in his lack of playing time overall, but if you bring him back as safety three, and then it's Elliot or a veteran, whatever, I think that safety room is, is just fine for Miami. 